People often know that they're struggling with anxiety, but they don't always realize that seemingly disconnected aspects of their experience might all be connected by a thread of anxiety. By the end of this video, you'll know what the main features of generalized anxiety disorder are, and perhaps you'll be able to relate them to your own experience. My name is Dr. Park. I'm a psychologist for youth, and here at Through the Waters, we nurture youth mental health. Those of us in the mental health field tend to say that anxiety and depression are like the common colds of mental health, meaning they are the common mental health conditions that affect people. Although there are many different anxiety disorders that can be diagnosed, the kind of standard default diagnosis of anxiety is called generalized anxiety disorder. This is probably the first anxiety disorder that a mental health professional is going to think about diagnosing someone with if they're struggling with anxiety, unless their anxiety has a more specific flavor to it as it would with other diagnoses like social anxiety, specific phobia, panic disorder, or others. There are some specific criteria that have to be met in order for a person to qualify for a diagnosis of generalized anxiety disorder according to the Big Book of Mental Health Disorders, which is called the DSM-5. Here are those criteria, and I'll list them for you from A through E. A, excessive anxiety and worry, more days than not, about events or activities such as work or school. B, the individual finds it difficult to control the worry. C, the anxiety or worry are associated with three or more of the following six symptoms. One, restlessness or feeling keyed up or on edge. Two, being easily fatigued. Three, difficulty concentrating or mind going blank. Four, irritability. Five, muscle tension. Six, sleep disturbance, such as difficulty falling or staying asleep or restless, unsatisfying sleep. For those six symptoms we just went through for C, at least some of them need to have been present for more days than not for the past six months. By the way, I know this topic is getting pretty technical because we're digging into actual criteria here, but try to stay tracking with me if you can. And also, if you're finding this video valuable so far, please click the like and subscribe buttons so that you can continue to benefit from this mental health education over time. Okay. There are three more criteria, D, E, and F. Let's look at those. D, the anxiety, worry, or physical symptoms cause clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. Translation, the anxiety significantly affects the person's ability to live their life. E, the anxiety is not attributable to the physiological effects of a substance or medical condition. Translation, in order for a person to qualify for this diagnosis, their anxiety cannot be caused by drugs like meth, for example. It cannot be caused by a medication like Adderall, for example. And it cannot be caused by a medical condition like a thyroid condition, for example. If a substance or medical condition was causing a person's anxiety, that would be a different diagnosis, not this one. Now the last criterion is F. The anxiety is not better explained by another mental health disorder. Translation, generalized anxiety disorder seems to be to best describe the person's experience rather than another mental health condition such as social anxiety disorder, panic disorder, OCD, PTSD, or any other mental health diagnosis. If you'd like to learn more about anxiety and how to heal from it, you can enroll in my online anxiety program called Peace to the People. I'll share a link for that in the description below. Feel free to leave a comment if you'd like to share your thoughts or questions about generalized anxiety disorder so we can all be learning from each other.